Hey there, today's show was about buying a router. Which one should you get? Why should you get it? More antennas, less antennas? Let's check it out. Hey, there's Tom, Tom's Tech Show. Today, uh, I'm just gonna go over kind of the things that I look at and what I go through when I'm, you know, buying a router. I mean, there's uh, it's something you don't wanna do. You know, often you'll get one from your uh, cable company or internet provider and it's you know it's okay um, the the real the real issue the complete issue that you need to understand about routers is there are vulnerabilities that these routers get and you need to be in a place where you don't have to even think about it the uh, like Comcast, AT&T, Spectrum, whoever is out there putting out these routers and modems and things, mostly the routers in your home, they're not updating those. They're, you know, I mean, if you call and you have a problem and they say, oh, there's a new firmware, maybe we can do that and it'll fix your problem. You know, they might do that, but Typically, no. Typically, these are uh, bulk devices that they buy super cheap so that they can rent them to you for five bucks a month, right? So it's more advantageous for you to get your own. Don't pay them. Just buy buy your own and buy a good one. So, I mean, if you if you just look anywhere, I mean, it's like look at all these things. I mean, there's like tons of them. Like, which one of these is the best, right? I mean, oh, there's one here that looks like. It's got it's like an upside down spider, right? It's spider on its back. I mean, is that good? Well, if you look at these, they're you know three, four, five hundred dollars. Do I really need a five hundred dollar router? Probably not. So, granted, antennas are good. Um, there's like this small Netgear one. If you have a small apartment and like a flat apartment or something where you don't need you know, to cover a lot of space, this might work okay. But if you're in a house, you're gonna want something more along the lines of one of these that has, you know, three, four antennas, something like that, um, in order to cover, you know, help to cover the space. Okay, so one of the things that we have to kind of look at is um, how do these routers connect? Now, this is gonna be one of the differences between you know, the router that you get from your cable company and the router that you yourself buy. So if you have one that has a router that has one antenna um, and it can communicate with your laptop, but then you go off and, you know, you buy a second laptop and then you have, you know, a TV or something else, and then you're gonna start crowding the Wi-Fi signal. So Wi-Fi is, uh, non-aggressive. So if something is communicating with the Wi-Fi antenna and you want to communicate with it at the same time, you're going to go, are you busy? Are you busy? Oh, you're busy. Okay, I'll wait. Okay, I'll wait. You know, it's like two people trying to get through, you know, an intersection where the, where the you know, the street light is out, right? It's like, I'm going to go, then you're going to go, then I'll go. You know, so it's kind of this this sharing thing. And the more devices that you have, you know, the more they're going to compete for connecting to that antenna. So different uh, companies that, you know, they've made different standards and those have moved forward. And one is one standard is called MIMO. So it's multi input output. So that will handle more traffic on your Wi-Fi. So if I only have, if I have a bunch of devices, it's more easy to handle. Typically the MIMO devices will have, um, more antennas so we'll have you know maybe you know a second antenna over here that's that's sitting here so and that's going to help you know with with the MIMO traffic the next thing that comes along after MIMO is beam forming so what will happen is the computers that are let's move this over here flip it over the computers that are on this side of the router Move the router into the middle a little more. The computers that are on this side of the router end up only communicating 
with this antenna, this side of the antenna. So, so if I make this antenna uh, purple, and this one purple. So now the purple ones are communicating and the yellow ones are communicating. So that's allowing for even more, you know, throughput on the signal. So some of the like more I deal with uh, ubiquity uh, access points at uh, that I've set up before. Um, and they in a little tiny little circular flying saucer little uh, Wi-Fi access point, they actually have three antennas and can separate signal into three spots and then you put multiple ones of those around your office so you end up with six or nine or twelve different places that your computers can connect to and they're all separated from the others so you're not sharing connections or bandwidth so that makes it really fast for anyone that's connecting so those are some definitely some things to look at and you know make sure that you're most today will have MIMO um, only up until you get up into the really expensive kind of things where you get into uh, beam forming. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you find the router. You have to do all this before you get to the store. You really do because you have to be able to come here. Okay, say I'm going to buy this D-Link DIR842 wireless router. It's an AC1200, so it's a little bit older. It's going to be fairly inexpensive probably, but I want to go to the support page. First thing I do is go to the support page and I go, okay, we're going to be, it's a newer one. We're going to be just buying it. So it's probably going to be, they have different models. So they first released it at, you know, level, hardware level B, and then they release another one that's hardware level C. Okay, so I want to come down here and look at firmware. Okay, so the l earliest firmware is September 2017, and then they updated it again in November 2017, and then they updated it again uh, October of 2018. So there's been a few in the years you know, like a couple of years that it's been out. They've had three updates to their firmware. That's okay. Often you will go, you'll find routers, and you'll go out there and there will be, this is the initial firmware and there's nothing else. Um, so those kind of things you want to stay away from because that means number one, they're not paying much for the hardware. They're not paying much for that device. So they don't want to put any research behind it. I mean, these devices are commodity. I mean, the chips inside them, you know, are typically small and slow and, you know, maybe cost, you know, 25, 50 bucks at most, you know, depending on the price of the, of the router, just the chips inside, right, might cost 25 bucks. And at, at commodity out on the market, you may, they may be able to buying them at, you know, $10 or $5. So how much research are they going to put into that? trying to make that chip work and keep that chip up to date. Not much because they would rather create a new router with a new chip and put the new firmware on that and have you buy a whole new router, especially when they're selling them to you at, you know, 70, 80 bucks or something like that. Okay, so obviously if, I don't know how much this one costs, I could look it up here. Uh, uh, how much is it? Go to shopping. Okay, okay. This one's seventy-one dollars for that, for an AC twelve hundred. I'm thinking, no, that's not a good deal. Okay, so I wouldn't buy that one specifically. I mean, it's got three firmware updates, which is uh, okay. So here's the one that that I use actually in my house. This is a uh, Netgear AC seventeen fifty. It's dual band AC, so it's it's a couple years old. I mean, it's not brand new it's a couple years old but if i come down here right now i'm on firmware 10146 but if i look at previous versions down here on this page we have uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 17 other releases of firmware since this router came out so this is a device that netgear is standing behind, right? They're like, no, this device is gonna be updated. This device is gonna have all the vulnerabilities, you know, all updated all the time so that we keep our customers, you know, protected. So they, I mean, the, Netgear, I think they've gone to a fairly common platform in all of their routers, um, in all of this end, this type of router that they have. I think it's the Nighthawk kind of um, set 
of routers in that line. And so they all use a fairly common firmware. So that means you're only developing that firmware once and it can go through all of them. That helps them in the update cycle and be able to update the router and keep it going. And they've also, in one of these patches and updates, as they've gone through, they've added the switch to automatically update itself. So you have to go in, you have to look, go in, log in. So if you bought one of these today, you would probably have to go in, do at least one firmware update, and then go into the firmware update page and be able to say, check the box, automatically keep this up to date, which if you have a router and it has that page and it has that ability, you need to go check that box and let it update itself all the time because there are things that come out all the time and these router manufacturers are, some are doing it like for this model, for these Nighthawk series routers, they keep them updated and they're really good about, like I said, I mean, 17 updates since I bought this thing. And I think when I bought it, it was on 0024. So we've, you know, and I've let it update itself. I'll go in every once in a while and check and see what version it's on. Um, but just really good to have something that always stays updated and gets updated. This is probably one of the biggest things um, that people will put in their house that like if they're doing a lot of, you know, IOT stuff, like they're doing, they're getting the smart switches and they got a Google Home and they got an Amazon Alexa and all these things, um, especially the smart switches and some of the other, you know, little cheap smart devices that you get. Um, sometimes those can be easily, you know, hacked by people, you know, they'll find out, oh, this is, this port is open and it's, you know, able to be a attacked. Or I've also seen, you know, anecdotal reports of people who have taken and purchased some of these devices, set it up in their house, they don't like it, they, they um, return it, especially like security cameras, they return it and then the company never disconnects them from that device. The device gets sold again and now you can see into the other person's house, right? So some of these things, you know, there's still little quirks and little things that are out there. Keeping your, you know, router up to date all of the time really helps with protecting you from things that are going on. Okay, so that's kind of my, how I go through uh, picking my router and, and everything. I mean, I typically try and spend about 150 bucks that gets you better antennas, better signal, probably more likely, if not the latest and greatest technology, um, at least the one back. I mean, I, you're buying, you know, like when you buy, you used to buy, you know, a, a G router, you know, 802.11G. Well, does your laptop have a G, you know, Wi-Fi card in it? Does, you know, your phone or everything else? So typically if you're one back from the, uh, I think they're on a Z or something. If you, typically, if you're one back from whatever the latest and greatest is, it's a little bit less money and all of your devices are going to have that chip in it so that it can communicate at the right speed. Okay, so there you go, that's how I do it. Um, if you got any questions about any routers or if you have a favorite router of yours that you use and you've had really good experience with, let other people know down in the comments. And if you like more videos like this, uh, subscribe to my channel and like and thumbs up this video if it helped you. Um, I do videos like this uh, a couple times a week and I do videos also on, uh, you can see up here, I've got my Star Trek figures and I've got on this side over here, I've got my Marvel 10 year poster and we've got Marvel buckets and everything else hanging around here. I do videos on that, movies and things I like, and TV shows that I like. I do some videos every once in a while on photography, because I also like photography. So um, all kinds of stuff. If you like any of those things, just subscribe. You'll get those. Each of them are arranged in playlists, so you can just go through each playlist as you want. All right. Well, thanks for watching this one, and take care.